Hi, beautiful people. Welcome back. If you're new, welcome, welcome. My name is Georgia. So we're going to do a recap and a review of Love and Marriage Huntsville, season nine, episode three, titled Sign, Sealed, Divorce, I'm Yours. Sign, Sealed, Deliver, I'm Yours. Okay, so now you know that's a play of words on that, um, that, that song title. So it's the last night of the girls trip. Everybody is in there all white. Everybody looks so nice. They're having dinner. We're at the dinner table now. We have Mel say, you know, some nice words about, you know, this is our first girls trip. I hope we could take, keep this. We, we had a good time. You know, I hope we could keep the same energy as we take it home. And we have Tisha say, keep hope alive, girl. Everybody found that to be a little bit funny, you know, have a little chuckle. And then we see Destiny and Sonny sitting next to each other. Melody said, you know, in the confessional, she said she saw that Destiny was uncomfortable having Sonny next to her. So she had Sonny and Lauren switch seats because Lauren was next to Mel. So they had them switch seats to, you know, make everybody more comfortable. And then um, remember the group photo they had taken? At the top of the, um, when they went for the ATV ride, Melody had one. She's going to let everybody sign it, and then she's going to mail everyone a copy of that photo. When she was saying, you know, every, all the nice things about the trip, everybody was clapping and said, yes, you're right. We had Kimmy saying this was her first girl's trip. She'd never been on one before because um, she didn't tell them the reason why, but she, she told her husband why when she went home. And everybody was... Um, you know, clapping and saying, yes, you're right. This was a good girl's trip. We had Lauren finally speaking. You always see Lauren in the background, but she finally spoke and said, you know, first girl's trip with women she don't really know, and she had a good time. So, of course, Destiny's sitting there with her screw face, and Melody was like, Destiny, you don't agree? Destiny is like, mm, I'm not saying anything. It's like, because you didn't say anything, you didn't clap, you didn't do anything. And then Destiny goes in a confessional and says, Everybody is being fake. I wish everybody could give their real emotion. I'm like, girl, the reason you're not happy is because you didn't get a chance to talk to Melody. Melody is not there for your energy, and she is not having... Yes, you talked to her while you guys were at the top of the hill, but it still wasn't enough for you, and you wanted more time, and you realize that after this girl trip is over, you're not going to see Melody again. She's going to be... She's going to ghost you, as they say. And um, I think that's how Destiny was feeling. So then, um, I believe, um, I forget what, who started it was either, De oh yeah, Destiny said to Miss Nell, you know, I felt uncomfortable you asking, asking Sonny about having kids, you know, with my ex with me standing right there. And I'm like, wait, Destiny, I know you kind of upset, but maybe you shouldn't have that question right now because aren't you dating Nell's son? How is your future mother-in-law going to be looking at you? I'll be like, wait a minute, this girl is still hung up on this man and have dating my son. I'm sure Miss Nell had that at the back of her mind, and I'm wondering if Destiny realized that afterward. Like, okay. So, uh, I don't know if her and Miss Nell's son is going to work out because I'm sure the mama going to protect her cub, you know, as any mama would. And, um, but back to the table. Um, she said that to Miss Nell, you know, I'm, I'm kind of upset that you asked. Sonny about Moses and having kids with me right here. And Miss Nell was like, I wasn't trying to upset you. That was not my intention. <laughs> and then Sonny jumps in and said, well, I wish people would, you know, accept things for what they they are and stop pushing the, and stop pushing the, something to that effect, she said. And something about the word of being, um, what's the word that was used? betrayed i think it was the word betrayed and destiny said you know it's funny you should use that word because isn't that what you did to me then she needed to try to jump in Destiny was like look she needed to shut up no she didn't say it like that of course you know i'm doing the, the other version she's like shut up it's between me and her you don't need to as an outsider you don't need to jump into this right now that kept she needed mouth book closed like you be quiet girl don't stay out of it so that we had Destiny and Sonny going back and forth a little bit, but it was, it wasn't loud. It wasn't, it wasn't 
nasty. But it was you, you, the tone was subdued, but you you could see the, the seriousness of it. And uh, at one point, she asked Destiny, you know, about her facial expression, or Destiny was like, "You were turning up your face and giving me the energy, same kind of energy you're giving me now." And she's like, "Was I?" And then Mel jumped and like, "Yeah, girl, you were. <laughs> you kind of were. At one point, your face was all screwed up." So yeah, they went back and forth, and they're like. And I think it was Destiny who said, you know, we're really not going to solve anything right here and then. We're just going to dead it. And I was like, yeah, 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 let's dead it. Let's dead it. Let's dead it. So that was that. Then she gave everybody a right rose. Tired of the same old styles? Ready to make ways with your wardrobe? Welcome to Touch Me Textures where bold meets beautiful and every piece is designed to turn heads. Our collections are all about textures that feel as good as they look. From flowy dresses to eye-catching accessories, we've got everything you need to express your style your way. Find pieces that speak to you for every vibe, every adventure. And the best part? Our site makes it easy to shop and easy to fall in love with everything. So why wait? Dive into style that's uniquely yours at touchmetextures.com. Feel fabulous, look unforgettable. Click the link in the description to check out all we have to offer. And with the phrase to new beginning so everyone got a red white rose and that's how we ended the girls trip so that was that scene with them now we have Ken and Trish I think they just went out to have smoothies or whatever that are you know juice they're sitting there they're talking about the girls trip they're catching up she's letting him know what happened with um, the discussion at, at the trip and um, she's letting him know that um it was brought up about her and Martel and that she wanted to talk to Mel alone about it before it went left. But somebody brought it up and it, the discussion. So we had Ken listening for a while and then he said, you know what? As a matter of fact, I don't want to talk about it no more because this was before me. And really at this point, I'm starting to get upset. However, Martel is out here trying to, um, to dirty your name. And I'm going to have to have to talk with him to make sure that he stopped doing that because I'm here now and I got to protect your image. So that's where we have it with, with Ken and Trisha. He also said they need to have a sit down with Marquez because, you know, it just needs to, their relationship needs to have a better flow. Yes, he, he is the kid's father. Uh, we know the young man is now 18, so they're only focusing really on their daughter. But he said, yes, he, it's, it's their father, and he wants to make sure that, you know, I'm in the picture now, I'm the man of the house now, and I want to make sure that we have a better relationship than we do. So we're going to have to have a sit-down with Marquez. And that's where we we left it with Trish. Um, I, He said something, and then Trish responded, but was, yeah, mm -hmm, okay, you know how I am. And I'm like, I'm looking at her sideways, like, this girl really do not want to get divorced from Marquez. Why don't she want to get divorced and move on with Ken? It's obvious that she's not, she's not ready. She keeps saying that she is, but, um, you could tell she's not ready. But hey, let's keep going. So that was the scene between the two of them. We see Kimmy and Maurice at home. She's cleaning up the back porch. She's so happy to be home. She tell Maurice, get ready for summer. So I'm guessing this was filmed like in the springtime. They sit down, they talk about the trip. She was saying that um, she really wanted to be home a long time ago. He's like, but you need some time to get away with your girl. She's like, I really don't. She want to be up under him 24 seven. Sometimes you need a break to miss each other, you know? Um. It talk about she talks about the confrontation with Miss Nell, you know, the fact that her and Trisha and Mel had it worked out when they were weren't happy with their rooms. But then Miss Nell inserted herself and it got real loud. She said Miss Nell was talking to her like she was one of her kids and she wasn't for that. She wanted her to walk away, regroup, and come talk to her when she got some sort of sense. Um 
Maurice asked her, so which of the girls did you get to know better that you were happy that you got to know better? And she said, Trish. She got to know Trish a little bit better. And then she told her about how Trish with the lies, how she's saying one thing here, one thing there, and then everything is coming back in her face. But she still was glad to know to get to know her a little bit better. Um, Maurice talks about the guys going to do archery and how we have Martel with the story of having how Trish came over to the house. And, um, saying that she wasn't all that, I guess, you know, after he slid in her DM and she came over, he's saying that nothing happened because Trish wasn't all that. And the stories don't match. So according to everybody, the stories aren't matching. So that's what they're talking about. Trish and Martel and Marquez and Ken and Trish. The fact that she's had boyfriends during her marriage or had affairs during her marriage and why she's not getting divorced because it doesn't take that long to get divorced so that's that's basically what this whole episode was about marquez trish and ken at some point everybody was talking about what's going on with them so we leave maurice and um kimmy at home and then we head over to leticia and marcel again we're talking about what the trip so same thing uh trish is telling marcel about her experience with shanita <laughs> marcel said he thinks he know her and that she's a tall girl right and tisha's like yeah but tisha did step to her you <laughs> see the episode of tisha up in her face like don't be calling me the ops girl i don't know you so don't, don't be come over here giving us problems as an outsider we got enough in here to deal with so marcel advised her he's like leave that girl alone please and Trish was like, why? He's like, because she won't be here next day. I'm like, oh, that's wrong. He's like, why you say that? He said, because Mel has a track record that, you know, she don't keep friends very long. So don't even waste your time on this one because she won't be around next year for you to even talk to. Mar- Marcel, that's so wrong. That's so wrong of you. That's not cool. Um, And then now we're talking about, again, his perspective, her perspective on Marquez, Ken, and Trish that something's not added up. Marceau even made a comment that somebody needs to teach them how to lie because they don't know how to lie. <laughs> they have lessons on how to lie? I don't know. Oh my gosh, that's that's something else. Marceau says somebody needs to teach them how to lie. So they go about, they're talking about that. Um, they also talk about um, the jokes that Martel is making about sleeping with Destiny, saying how her son looks like him. And um, he wanted to know if Mel mentioned anything about, you know, relationship between Martel and Destiny. And she said, Tisha said she didn't come out, Melody didn't come out and say it exactly, but she thinks that they stepped together. Because the fact was, she said, I don't know what Destiny does. So they talked about that for a little while. Like I said, this whole episode was based around Trish, Marquez, and Ken. So now the last scene of the episode, we have Trish, Marquez, and Ken having dinner. They're talking about the relationship between um, Ken and his kids. He's like, you know, I'm still not over my wife. This hurts. Marquez, you left your family. What you want? You, I know what Marquez wanted. He wanted to leave, go do him, then come back and have his wife and his kids waiting on him put them on a little shelf let me go run around out here and then come back and see and then he didn't expect nobody to come in and take his place because what she's a married woman she ain't going nowhere as far as i know on paper i'm still married because he kept saying that we're still married on paper so we had um can tell him he's like listen i'm not here to make things difficult for you i want us all to be able to work together and make it smooth because at the end of the day, it's about the kids, you know? And then Marquez is asking, do you tuck my kid in that night? Do you hug my, my daughter? He's like, yeah, because my daughter and her daughter hang out. But I remember that um, Ken, is that's not Ken's biological daughter. Remember, he said he was in a relationship before Trish and there was a little girl and he still considered her his daughter and they still have a relationship. So that's who he's talking about. So he said, yeah, if I'm going to hug my daughter, that of course I'm going to hug yours too. And, um, and that's how the relationship with, I want them to see a positive, you know, a positive parent experience. And he suggested that, um, Marquez go get some therapy. 
he told him, listen, I've had therapy and it's good. And he didn't come out and say directly, go get it. But he's like, therapy is a good thing. Go get it. Because at one point, Marcus started crying. What happened is he brought the divorce papers. And I'm like, that's not no freaking divorce papers. One sheet of paper isn't supposed to be like a whole docket of, of Tired of the same old styles? Ready to make ways with your wardrobe? Welcome to Touch Me Textures, where bold meets beautiful and every piece is designed to turn heads. Our collections are all about textures that feel as good as they look. From flowy dresses to eye-catching accessories, we've got everything you need to express your style your way. Find pieces that speak to you for every vibe, every adventure. And the best part, our site makes it easy to shop and easy to fall in love with everything. So why wait? Dive into style that's uniquely yours at touchmetextures.com. Feel fabulous, look unforgettable. Click the link in the description to check out all we have to offer. something in a binder and all of that. Why is it it's just that one sheet? So I don't think they really are divorced. I don't know what paper that was. Maybe that was just for, made for TV for us. But um, I don't think they're really divorced. So when Trisha is now signing the paper, and they actually sat down and ate dinner. I'm like, I can't believe this. I wouldn't be eating no food in a situation like this. I would not be hungry. So Trisha is signing the paper, and I don't know who left with it. Was it he who left with the paper or was it Trish? So that's why I'm also thinking that this is not real. He's like, we just got to get it notarized and then um, we got to get it filed and then we'll be divorced. Something ain't right about that scene. I did not feel comfortable watching that whole thing right there. Something ain't right about that scene. So um, he started crying, like literally bawling. Uh, he, Trish is like, here we go again. We got... <laughs> We got Marquez crying, playing on our emotions. You're supposed to feel sorry for him. Then he gonna stop crying and everything is nothing's gonna change. So she's like, she's over it. I guess she's seen it a thousand times. So she was like over it at this point. So that's what we have. We we left, they left him crying at the table and left it with the bill. I'm like, oh my God. Ken and Trisha got up. They made eye contact like, you ready to go? You know that, that look that say, you ready to go? They got up and they left Marquez at the table. So that's why I said this whole this whole episode was about them. Because everybody was talking about them. The fact that and the fact that Trish is lying. And we still want to know more about what happened between Trish and Martel. And she's not giving up the information. And that's the real reason she's on the show. And Mel is not about to fall for it. Like, Mel is over it. Like, you can do whatever you want. And I'm done with that man. Y'all can have him at this point. Nothing that they could say is going to hurt her. Because she don't need Martel for nothing. So, therefore, she's not going to be pulled in and be played with. So, that is the, the episode. You know? Trisha and Ken. I don't know about those two. At least Trisha anyway. Because she's a damn liar. Excuse my... She's a liar. Nothing you say, nothing she says we believe. She talks in circles, and we're supposed to follow her. Like, no, girl, mm -mm, we're getting off this ride. When you get your lies straight or let Marcel teach you how to lie right, as he says, then you could come back and talk to us. So that's it, guys. This That is the recap and the review of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Season 9, episode 3, titled, Signed, Sealed, Divorced, I'm Yours. Make sure that you go in the description and check out all the links in the description. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video if you wish, and until next time, be sure to take care of yourselves and your families. Bye-bye. <laughs>